Good evening and welcome to this edition of Talk Pixa. Over a week ago, Engens gathered for a cultural festival that drew the same passion as Rugby League. The Enga Show brought together people from five districts and served the purpose of reviving traditional arts that are seeing a decline because of new influences. But the show is just one tiny aspect of a broader push to protect and preserve the values and culture of Engen society. Scott Wider was in Enga recently, and among the people he spoke to was Aki Tumu, director of the Take Ada, the Enga Cultural Center, who is spearheading a move to include cultural education in 21 schools across the province. This is a province that has suffered from a bad reputation. The frequent tribal fighting in previous decades has become part of the image of the province. But Enga has been working hard to turn that perception around. A free education policy by the provincial government has sent several thousands of students to university and secondary schools. The cost per year, averaging between 5 and 9 million kina, representing about 20% of the province's development budget. People are tired about tribal fights. In this previous interview with the provincial administrator, Dr. Samson Amian, he agrees there are struggles managing the province, but there is a general forward push for development and cultural preservation. Now, if you drive back, it's called back to Hangen, you'll see a lot of permanent houses being built in some of these places. Some in water and areas, permanent, costing them 200,000, 300,000, 400,000. And businesses are popping up in every place. So I, I think, in my honest opinion, the, the, the um, people are changing. People are tired of this old, you know, old, old um, way of living, huh? where, where, where tribal fight dictates every other thing. Enga also has other important assets, a single language and the people's ties to a culture that can be traced several generations back to a single ancestor. A week ago, Engens gathered for what was perhaps the biggest event outside of rugby league that united people from five districts. The Enga show this year has been different in that only Engens participated in the display of cultural activity. Even as a province with a single language, the diversity was evident, with each group clearly identifiable. Because we have one language, we are more or less united. Governor Sir Peter Ipatas and his administration have been driving cultural preservation for many years. He says the show and the emphasis on authentic bilas has caused people to revive the arts and the stories. Uh, through that one language, the people feel that we are one people. And uh, then when you get a, a cultural show, uh, like this event uh, today, it also strengthens our unity. Uh, because the whole province is coming to showcase uh, the culture. The show drew good reviews over three days of the event. Despite the mud and the drizzle, Wabeg Town and the surrounding communities came out in droves to be part of the festivities. Meeting also me, I'm almost not me looking more just like line stuff like Today I'm Mosem. I'll hang out yet, me play yet. Original or Langa stuff, me play. I'm almost feel proud of stuff like The show goes beyond just being a cultural festival. It is part of a move to show the common ancestral links between people of Enga and the Hela provinces. And it also complements efforts by Engen leaders from various sectors to maintain the values they believe should be taught to the children of the future. Uh, you will see that from last year, because we are only doing it within Engen, we have now uh, got the students involved. And so uh, it, it becomes an educational, uh, cultural thing for the kids. 
So all the uh, uh, interested primary schools and uh, high schools and of course secondary schools and our tertiary institutions in the province are also uh, involved in the uh, cultural show. Um, I must also state here that uh, we have also gone one step further in actually developing our own culture uh, curriculum that has now been rolled out to all the schools. An important organization at the forefront of cultural preservation is the Takianda, the Enger Cultural Center. The center's director, Aki Tumu, and his team are developing a cultural education program that teaches the culture and values of Engen society to schools in the province. Since having contact with the outside world, we see that we are beginning to lose a lot, especially our values. And we cannot take everything with us, but we cannot also leave everything behind, especially our values. And if you look at any society, the values are what shapes and forms society and also shapes and forms the attitudes and behavior of people in that given society. And we think these are uh, what we should pass on to our kids. Inside the cultural center is a tiny part of Enger's cultural history that stretches back thousands of years. It tells of trade, wars, building materials and traditional currency and at the turn of the 20th century, the arrival of foreigners. Culture is a moving thing. It's, it's changing. And, but what we want to pass on is our values. Values basically are the same the world over. They don't change. And these are rules or proverbs that sprout more or less from the Ten Commandments. They don't change. I'll give you... The show also drew participation from secondary schools. This is one of the goals of the Takianda and the provincial government, to pass on traditional knowledge and wisdom to the young. The province hopes to expand the cultural education as it sets a pace for other provinces and districts to follow. You're watching Talk Pixar. From Enga and now to the autonomous region of Bougainville. Firstly, let's look at the barter system. How the people of Buka still maintain their relationship with other nearby island communities through this traditional method of trading goods and services. It's the exchange of garden food with seafood by people from the inland and those from the outer islands. And there is still considerable significance to this trading method. Our journalist, Fabian Hakalitz, tells us more about it in this next story. The Bata system is the traditional exchange of foods and artifacts like clay pots between neighbors like that of the Hiri trade or Kula trade. This system has been used for centuries and long before money was invented. In the autonomous region of Bougainville, although hit by the influence of modernization and globalization, the people of Buka still maintain this trading method. The historical queen Karola Bay in Buka Island is one of those exchange points of this traditional path system in the autonomous region of Bougainville. Here, there is a great exchange of goods and services amongst the people. We still exist. We ran out long when it's a day and we have a bad system. We have a market and we have a kind system. We have a system for people. We have a market and we have a double day. Wednesday, na 
Saturday. Mm. And we give him the island of time to find in peace, and then only come. No longer is let to play day, belong behind him. Exchange, huh? Women, especially from nearby communities of Halia, Hagogohe, Chetelato, Hako, Pate, and Tonsu, bring with them garden foods like cocoa, taro, and banana, and exchange them with seafood like fish with the people from Poran Island. All get a Wednesday. Me bless a week. This guy can please because my cat and me own now no here now. Me bless a week and peace and peace. Me bless a week and peace and peace. Because lo, lo, lo said blo, blo, you mean. All man no sa get in peace too much. All same now me bless a week and peace that's all no here. Me parula market. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Apart from what we sell and exchange for fish, the leftovers we then bring them back home. Over the past years, little has changed with the way the bath system is conducted. Locals said money is now used and also are essentials like clothing, but which have not entirely changed the way in which the bath system takes place. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm just let me go to some plenty can can something now to sell him or second hand clothes or los clothes only by long town long or all of many or Chinese shop now they come now they sell him back long or no market too. Mm. so I mean us I mean all of no sell him something long pellets that's all and more something lost to a dual is a second the Boca Urban Council has realized the need for proper infrastructure to sustain the Karula market. Although the Karula market is not under the jurisdiction, town manager Edward Kenai said they will assist to link this market with the tourism development plan for Boca Town. We have now talked to those who are actually running the market and I've got my officers who are responsible for the market to actually help them uh, build up their bylaws, um, the rules for the market, and then just, just train them how to run it, collect fees, uh, proper storages, and all this. And then uh, who knows, in the future we might, when our development takes place in our new market, we can probably help them to be part, you know, part of the program, so we can also assist them. But these are feeder markets. Uh, in terms of tourism, um, that market is the only market that still conducts the butter system today. So that butter system is still very much active and alive now. And, and so in terms of tourism, when we put the packages in place, we will make sure that we market that place. We will market that market and, and let the people know that in that market, the, the butter system is very much alive. You will go and see it in the, uh, when, when you witness. And, and the market starts at probably 4 o'clock in the morning. And by the time 7 o'clock you go, it's, you're late. So you have to be there early in the morning to see the exchange.
You're watching Talk Pixar. The national government of Papua New Guinea still owes the autonomous Bougainville government large sums of money into the millions. President of the autonomous Bougainville government, Chief John Momis, is one of the few who have always been vocal on this issue, which he claims is in breach of the Bougainville peace agreement. According to President Momis, the national government owes Bougainville over 800 million kina in total revenue. Since the establishment of the autonomous Bougainville government in 2005, monies have not been fully paid as per the Bougainville Peace Agreement. Chief John Morris is one of those few elites who have been very vocal about the outstanding monies since taking office as the president of Papua New Guinea's autonomous region of Bougainville. Speaking exclusively to Talk Pixar, Chief Momis says that the national government was not faithful enough as a party to the Bougainville Peace Agreement. The national government owes us, according to our uh, calculation, approximately about 800 million in RDG. And of course, with a recurrent grant, uh, probably they probably owe us twice. We only get about 400,000 we should be getting about a million. Uh, you know, West Sipic, for example, gets four million in recurrent grant. Bougainville, which has made a huge contribution to the national government, uh, is being treated in this way, and I think it's totally unfair. Bougainville did not only bankroll Papua New Guinea's independence from the proceeds of the mine, but also from copra and cocoa, and from the contribution of educated Bougainvillians to national development. And I think it's totally unfair for the national government to, uh, to reciprocate in such an unjust fashion. Chief Momis says the national government has a duty to fulfill and is to give Bougainville what it deserves. Face us in Bougainville. Uh, the Restoration and Development Grant is an unconditional grant under the peace agreement and the PNG constitution, which the national government is bound to give to Bougainville. But unfortunately, since the uh, establishment of the ABG, we have been uh, uh, given uh, only a small proportion of it in dribs and drabs. And that makes it very difficult for us to plan and to uh, fund uh, projects that the ABG sees as priorities for us. And that, that is, uh, the national government, in fact, is breaching the constitution. Uh, the other grant that uh, we uh, should be getting in, uh, in adequate amounts is the recurrent fund. Uh, we only get a small proportion of that fund as well because uh, you know, in Bougainville, we have a huge task. The Bougainville crisis reduced Bougainville to basic humanity. In fact, we have been reduced to below ground zero level. And we are expected as a government, as a, um, you know, uh, a government that has uh, little capacity to provide services to our people, to re rebuild from the ashes of the war, and most importantly, to evolve or develop a new system of government, which was not in PNG anywhere before. So with that, those uh, great responsibilities, we are, we are being given meager resources, and, and it makes it very difficult for the government uh, to, uh, to perform its uh, responsibilities and it's difficult for us to convince the people, you know, people who have been alienated for so long to have confidence in government and especially a government that has been elected by them and mandated by them. Uh, we have our national MPs uh, use their DSIP and PSIP money to help their constituents, but unfortunately they circumnavigate the ABG, which is the legitimate government on the ground. 
and uh, DSIP and PSIP funds are not constitutional. Uh, they are not constitutionally guaranteed or required as the restoration development grant is. So, you know, the four members really should be supporting the ABG, which is the government of the people of Bougainville, and which the people of Bougainville should be focusing their energy, their attention, and their commitment to help develop and build capacity for and um, work hard to help our people to believe in their own government. And I think that's uh, a, um, an issue that we would be taking up with the national government uh, in our next uh, engagement. And that's where we end the program tonight. And until we do this again the same time next Sunday, I'm Neville Choi. Good night.